mighty Missouri, largest and most powerful battleship in the world, is ready for launching. Her sponsor, daughter of the senator from Missouri, sends the traditional bottle of wine crashing against the ship's bow. <laughs> Fastest and most modern warship afloat, the 45,000-ton Missouri goes down the ways months ahead of schedule. Her secondary batteries already installed. More than just another fighting ship, the Missouri is symbolic of the ever-growing strength of the United States Navy. Gung-ho in Chinese means all together, and that's the way Americans of Chinese ancestry are backing the nation's drive to sell war bonds. Here in New York City's colorful Chinatown district, patriots rally to lend their money to the country of their adoption. This is the spirit that is typical of all Americans, regardless of creed or color. Old China and new, united in the common cause, victory for the United Nations. Setting off 27 tons of dynamite in a single blast, engineers shake loose 187,000 tons of copper ore from one of the great Chilean mines. Copper ore by the train load, rolling down from the richest deposit in the Andes. At a smelting plant deep in the mountains, the precious metal-bearing rock yields molten copper in fiery streams. Molding ingots, 99% pure. From this one plant, 522 million pounds of copper a year to help feed the war industries of the United Nations. A plane in flames, but it's only to test the efficiency of the Army's newest firefighting truck. From the nozzle suspended in midair, a powerful stream of carbon dioxide literally smothers the flames. Capable of extinguishing an acre of burning gas or oil in a matter of seconds, the truck will be a boon to Air Force ground crews. Tumbling for health. One of the ways Canadian Navy men keep fit in temperature that's 10 degrees below zero. On the parallel bars, a former Canadian Olympic champion, now a petty officer, instructs a class in exercises that toughen muscles for the long weeks aboard ship. Practicing with Indian clubs limbers arms that soon will be swinging signal flags from the decks of war vessels. This is the largest Navy training center in the British Empire. And after 10 weeks of this rugged training, men are physically fit for any assignment. On Italy's east coast, British artillerymen prepare to take Orsogna, an enemy-held town important to the Allies, as the 5th and 8th Armies drive toward Rome. Officers plot the direction of fire. The barrage begins. <laughs>
supporting airfield, the 99th United States Fighter Squadron, attached to the 8th Army, is composed entirely of Negro pilots. Veterans of 236 missions in Africa, the Mediterranean, and Italy, men of the 99th have a brilliant record for the six months they've been operating overseas. Now they take off to aid ground forces advancing on Orsonia. On the central front, observers guide the American cannonading of Nazi forces in and around San Pietro. Massing mortars and tanks, the Americans hurl a concentrated and devastating fire upon this center of enemy resistance. The American entry into San Pietro. Buildings are searched for booby traps left by the enemy. Nazi planes sweep back over San Pietro in a last show of resistance. An American soldier, nearly buried alive by one of the bombs, is dug out safe and unharmed. Others, many of them civilians, are not so fortunate. This is the real tragedy of war. Slaughtered child and grief-stricken mother. Innocent victims of Nazi bombs. Today, townspeople see some of their own troops fighting with the Allies. Over muddy mountain trails too rough to be called roads, the rugged jeep can go just so far. Here, supplies must go up by mule pack and by manpower. On military maps, this is Hill 907. But to the American soldier plodding forward mile by mile, this is one of the most difficult campaigns of the war.